Hello. Welcome to uh, Workout Wednesday. So um, I've added to my live videos, I'm doing a weekly workout just for everybody. Today we're going to be focusing more on warm-ups. So um, for those guys who uh, don't know, we're in quarantine right now. And it's very difficult to get like the training you want from a martial arts perspective. So a lot of us are trying to find new and creative ways to work out at home with very minimalist training and minimal equipment. And one of my favorite uh, methods for this is kettlebells. Um, I got seriously into kettlebells probably five, six years ago. Um, but I've been doing them for longer. I've been doing them at least for eight years, uh, but very serious for the last five. I have had a lot of really fantastic kettlebell instructors and I can reference uh, their websites in the notes today. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my personal favorite use for warming up, which is uh, using kettlebells to kind of give me like the warm up I need, especially to counteract a lot of the muscle groups that I use in martial arts and kind of how to open all that up. And so that's gonna, I'm gonna be the main focus today is just kind of how to warm up with kettlebells. So we're gonna do four different movements today. And then at the end, I will show you a really simple, easy workout that you can do on your own and you can kind of, uh, how you would like it to be, like how the difficulty level. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, have lots of different shape bells. Uh, I use Kettlebell USA. That's the personal kettlebell that I really like. I like something pretty sturdy. Most kettlebells are in kilos, so I will tell you how many kilos these are. I won't be like, oh, this is the girl weight. This is the guy weight, because weight, weights don't have gender. So the first exercise we're gonna be doing is a neck stretch. And this is really beneficial to me. It's a personal favorite of mine. And you want like a pretty decently heavy bell, not super heavy, but not the lightest bell. So, um, so I'm gonna be using the 12 kilos. And the reason I like something like a decent size is because when I grab it behind me to help stretch my neck, I have very tight uh, neck injuries from jujitsu. All my jujitsu and my grapplers out there have probably had plenty of, you know, injuries. So I'm gonna grab the kettlebell behind me. And I want to think about pulling my shoulders back and down and then engaging my core so that my ribs don't flex. Just letting the weight kind of drift there. Now I'm going to do a couple different movements. I'm going to move my head side to side here first. Just kind of warming up my neck. And what this does is it really kind of pulls my shoulders back and down because we do a lot of rolling forward in jujitsu, And this is more of an opener. So just rolling here to here. Side to side. Now I'm gonna make an arch with my head. And what this is really gonna help do is stretch kind of the front of your neck, which I always have a lot of issues with, especially if you've been looking at your phone more often now, or your computer, I'm gonna turn to the side so everyone can see. Now we're going to do some head ramping. So I'm going to protect my chin to my chest. I'm going to give myself a double chin. And then I want to think about bringing the crown of my head back. Almost like I'm going to touch the wall with it here. So that's our head ramping. And this really helps stretch out my traps, which I always have lots of issues with. So I do this usually before every workout, just because I always forget to do my mobility throughout the day. So if I do it right before a workout, then I will not forget. So everyone thinks of like, oh, weights, like that will make you bulky or that will in, impede your jujitsu in some capacity. But you can use weights and kettlebells as this amazing tool for restorative work because the more you can move your body, it's just gonna be healthy for you. And that is just the neck stretch that I use. So it's like a weighted neck stretch. And like I said, we're looking to open here and then bring our shoulders back and down, but we're not compensating with our ribs. That's a mistake a lot of people do. So a lot of people are really so focused on just getting the reps done, especially in kettlebells. Um, so I really, I thought I understood kettlebells until I went to a reputable kettlebell instructor. And I would recommend either a strong first or a, you know an RKC instructor that will give you Repetitive will give you like really concrete skills to master before you can really improve your strength because strength is a skill. So um, these are just some of the stretches that I've done with my um, different kettlebell instructors that have really helped me out. So the first one is our next stretch. Our next is going to be a halo. And you can use a monitor. It depends on how tight your shoulders are. So what we're looking for is we're going to take the bell here and we're going to flip it upside down. So once I flip the bell upside down, I want to make sure I really kind of engage my core, keep my glutes tight. Now, when I'm moving the bell around my head, I don't want to move my head in the process. I'm going to keep my ribs stabilized. Now I'm just going to kind of open up the kettlebell around my head. 
but my ribs don't move. This is very important. So, okay, so my ribs are never going to move. I'm just kind of moving my shoulders. And I try to bring this as far back as possible without compensating my ribs again. So that way I can get a good stretch through my triceps, my shoulders, my lats. Just really kind of warming up that whole shoulder capsule. Okay, other direction. And then I'm going to show from the sides. So you can see that I'm not doing this, okay? So what I want to do is kind of stabilize everything, keeping my ribs rigid, so I'm nice and warm here for the halo. Okay. Awesome, so that's our halo. And I usually do about five each side. So I do about like 10 of all the different directions for the neck, and then I do about, like I said, about five of the halos. So our next exercise is going to be a, a goblet pry. So anyone who's done a goblet squat where we hold the kettle um, will be familiar also with the goblet pry. So a couple things about squat form, especially for jiu-jitsu guys, I notice a lot of jiu-jitsu guys bottom out on their squats because they're like, oh, I can get my butt to the ground. Good, go me. Uh, which is awesome. But the thing is, that's compensation again. So we're not kind of engaging. So this is something that I like to think from is that I want to make sure that my feet kind of like are like they're on dishes like dinner plates and I want to think about rotating my feet on the dinner plates without actually moving my feet. So I'm rotating out so I get that external rotation really engaging in here and my knees follow my pinky toes. So then I'm going to bring my hips back and knees follow my pinky toes and then my elbows are going to be touch the inside of my knees. So I see a lot of people their knees kind of buckle inward and that always concerns me when we're talking about injuries, especially in jiu-jitsu. So I, I just want to show that kettlebells could be kind of a great supplement to your martial arts training. So we're going to do like a little bit of a clean to clean it up. So I'm going to start here in my hinge. I clean it up and I catch. Now for my goblet pry, I want to make sure this is nice and rigid again. Same thing. Like my feet are in dinner plates, driving my knees out towards my pinky toes. Now once I do my pry, I'm going to use this weight. This weight's going to help me kind of stretch a little bit. So I'm going to kind of pause here. And this will help me keep myself very vertical. And then I'll just kind of use this to kind of move around in the squat. Now, I have ankle issues, so I use this ankle time to like, for my ankle flexion, like really leaning into the ankle, kind of leaning into the ankle. Hold this for about five seconds and then come back up again. And you'll notice when I come back up, I'm still driving my knees out. So go back down with control. Pry open, kind of hang out here for a little bit. Helps keep you nice and vertical. And then push back up. That's two. Really sinking in the squat, using my elbows to kind of push my knees out. Now I'm using a 16 right now, but you can use an eight, you can use a 12. Um, typically speaking, the more fit you are, the more resistance you need to start warming up your body. <laughs> or the, the stronger you are, I should say. And I already uh, ran today, so I'm pretty tight. So this is kind of really helping me out. Or if you're just sitting for a long time throughout the day, now that we're all kind of stuck inside, this is just a great way to kind of warm up your body. And then one more. Hang out a little bit. Now I'm going to do a like catch. So I usually let it reverse down and catch and swing to set it down. But you don't have to worry about that today. You should be using a light enough weight that um, it shouldn't be difficult to put down. I'm trying to keep this all pretty simple. But for those guys who have high level kettlebell skill, that's the good catch or the proper way to put it down. So now we're going to go ahead and finish with the windmill. So windmill is actually a fairly intermediate kettlebell movement. So I'm going to teach it on the wall today. I'm going to show two different angles. So the reason I like the wall, this is the wall will tell you if you're right. Okay. So when I'm against the wall, the best way to think is when my feet are underneath my hips and now I'm just going to turn. For my jujitsu guys, it's just going to be like your hip throw. The difference is all my weight is actually going to be on my back leg. I guys should be able to pick up my front leg fairly easy. I have a slight bend in my leg. Okay. So it's a hinge. When I do this, I'm not doing this. I'm not rounding my back. So I'm sticking my butt out, should feel stretch through here. Now I'm gonna take this hand here and I'm gonna guide it through the inside thigh as I keep this arm up the wall. So I'm gonna keep my gaze upward. I'm gonna track my inside thigh. 
I just felt my back pop and that felt amazing. And then back up. Okay, so most of the weight, again, is the, on the back leg. Now, depending on how tight you are, you may not be able to get down super low, and that's okay. So one more time. And five. Okay, I'm going to throw in a shimmer on the other whole round so I can see more of a direct view. So again, I'm against the wall. I'm going to turn my, turn my legs. Now, this leg is slightly is mostly straight. This leg has a slight bend to it, but most of my weight is on my back leg. Okay, I should be able to pick this up pretty easily. If you're leaning here and putting most of the weight on the lead leg, it defeats the purpose of the stretch. I want to feel this back here. So it's like I'm trying to shut a door with my butt. Arm is up, my gaze is going to go over, and I'm going to track my leg on the inside. You know, I find that uh, one side might be more mobile than the other. So I usually will feel this. Like I definitely feel this more on my left side. This is my knee injury side. So I can feel this all through my glute. Definitely use the stretch. And then also, this helps me keep my shoulders tracking properly too. Last one. Okay. So that's what I typically do for the warm-up. Now, for this case, we might be a little bit more on the skilled side with kettlebells. You can also do this as a weighted windmill, but very lightweight, just to warm up. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to snatch it up. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to get the same stance here, shifting my weight. Now I'm going to track my inside leg. My gaze stays upward. Because this is weighted now, it really helps you kind of work also my shoulder in a great range of motion as well. And I love taking kettlebells and doing really lightweight just to kind of work my shoulder through a strong range of, to a large range of motion. Because in jujitsu and Muay Thai and all the different martial arts that I train, it's in a very limited range of motion. We think of jujitsu or Muay Thai as like, oh, we'll fix everything. We'll make the grass greener and make my taxes lower and all that other stuff, but that's not necessarily the case. So I find that when I um, when I supplement and cross train and other things, it helps kind of keep my body healthy so I can continue to train as much as I can. And that's like the name of the game right now, is making sure that we're as healthy as possible. So just a quick review of everything we did. We did an assisted neck stretch with weight, kind of really opening up the chest. And I would do 10, in all the different directions, side to side, up and down. If you want to do circles, and I would definitely also do the head ramping. Okay, so that's about like four or five different things you can do just for the neck. For the halos, I would do weighted halos, about five each direction, and then we did our goblet prize. Um, depending on the weight you want to do, you can do somewhere between five and ten. I think five is sufficient if you're hanging out in the squat for a decent amount of time, and then you're going to finish with the wall windmills, which is five each side. And I find that this is a pretty solid warm up that's pretty simple, it's easy to duplicate, it doesn't take a lot of time, about 10 minutes max. And then you can follow up with a, a very short or minimalist approach to kettlebells for like a workout. So my goal when I do kettlebell workouts is I wanna get the maximum result with the most minimal amount of actual training and stress on the body. Cause I wanna get as strong as possible with the least amount of work. So I'm going to give you guys a really simple, fairly low skill kettlebell workout that you can do at home right after this warm up. So most everyone should be pretty warm now. So after you're done here today, you can go ahead and do this one. It's pretty simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our kind of, I guess I would just consider a heavy kettlebell for you. Okay. And it has to be heavy enough that you feel like you really, that your core starts to light up a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a really simple clean. We're just gonna go pull our hips and then catch it into our goblet position. Okay, from here we're gonna go ahead and do five goblet squats, making sure we're doing like a three second pause at the bottom. Our elbows are gonna to touch our knees. And then drive to the top, making sure our core is engaged and then doing that big exhale when I drive up. Shh. 
So after you do that about um, five times, you're gonna do a carry. So what that means is we're gonna hold it in this position still, keeping our core tight, and we're going to walk from like one side of the hallway or one side of your workout space to the other, and then come back and do another five. Now, you can do that as many times as you'd like. What I recommend is if you're fairly new to kettlebells or if you have a very large bell, um, you should do it like max three times. But what I, the big thing that I think is a misnomer in kettlebell workouts, especially in, um, if you're doing hard style, is rest. Because the whole point is to be strong. So if you're like limp newly around or you're doing like bad reps of squats, you should rest. So just to, to reiterate the workout and I will write the workout in the comment section. So the workout is gonna be, we're gonna do five goblet squats with a three second pause at the bottom. Then you're gonna rack it with two hands, walk a distance, do another five and then walk back, rest. When you feel good again, you're gonna do it again. If it is too easy, you're not using a heavy enough kettlebell. That is the best piece of advice that I ever got from my trainer. Cause he'd be, I would just like crush a workout, trying to get everything done as quickly as possible. Cause I treat it like fighting. And then my coach was always like, my trainer was always like, pick up a heavier belt. I'm like, but it's hard. That's the whole idea. So like the carry should be difficult. And if you're doing a heavy enough belt for the goblet squat and still maintaining form, your core also should just light up. And what's nice about kettlebells, it's very easy to set it down and bail the weight. So that's the other thing versus doing like back squats or anything that's like of a higher skill. And heavier weight can be a lot more dangerous. Kettlebells, because of the nature of what they are, it's very awkward, but very safe to bail the weight. So I hope everyone found this kettlebell warm-up very useful. If you have any questions, you can write them in the comment section. Um, if you would like to see more of the weekly workouts, uh, go ahead and just leave me a message. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you become a patron and get uh, detailed workouts in the Patreon page. So uh, the suggested pledge is $5. Also, if you want to support, you can also support my t-shirt company, which is hashtag chalk makes you stronger. You know, because I'm throwing around bells. So thank you guys so much and you have a wonderful Wednesday.